Hello, my name is Nadej Susanna and I go by Nan and I empower successful coaches to stop stress eating one craving at a time to be free around food. Are you constantly relying on comfort food for stress relief? Well, imagine breaking free from this cycle, finding healthier ways to manage emotions and taking control of your well-being. Keep watching. There are at least the three benefits to not equating food with relaxation. The first one is improved eating habits. If you don't rely on food as the primary means to relax, then chances are you have a more balanced, nutritious diet that is based on your body's hunger and fullness cues. The second benefit that you could have could be enhanced emotional awareness. When you're not masking emotions with food, then you may become more in tune with your feelings and develop healthier coping mechanisms. The third benefit could be diverse coping strategies. So we know that if you're resorted to food to cope with stress and tension, maybe there are other things that you haven't looked into, such as exercise, meditation, deep breathing, journaling, talking to a friend, engaging in hobbies or activities that bring you joy. So if you're anything like the coaches I'm empowering to find food freedom, here's what may be happening to you. Let's imagine it's the end of the day and you've had emotions all day long. And maybe there's a thought running through your mind, which is food makes me relax. How do you feel when you think food makes me relax? Chances are you feel certain. And what do you do when you feel certain? Well, of course, then we go to the kitchen and we eat. We don't question the thought that food makes me relax, but on the contrary, we gather evidence that it's true by maybe thinking, ah, oh, sighing or uh, noticing that we feel better. And we keep on eating even when we're full because we're not paying attention to our body cues. So what is the impact of this behavior in your life? Well, chances are, we make it impossible to relax without food. And what's really interesting is this uh, stress eating loop is that we're not eating because there's food or because it's the end of the day or because we had emotions all day long. No, we're eating, we have an overeating because we have this belief that food makes me relax. And then we're going to find evidence, right? It's this belief that's creating this pattern, this behavior. It's not the food. It's not the fact that we had emotions. It's not the end of the day, right? It's really this belief because we know that there are other people who at the end of a very similar day where they have experienced all sorts of emotions, they don't go towards food. And sure, there are people who smoke, who drink, who play video games, right? All the forms of avoidance of the feeling. Okay, that's true. But there are also other people who do not rely on anything else just to relax, right? Relaxation doesn't come from anything external. Whenever we feel relaxed, it's not because we've eaten, we've smoked, <laughs> we've, uh, we've drunk, we've talked to a friend, we've meditated, etc. Sure, there are things that happen in our body, okay? Of course, the interaction of whatever we do, whatever we consume, has an impact in our life, right? There's this interaction between the external thing and our body. But we can also do that. We can watch a movie feeling super stressed, even though it's a very romantic movie or there's nothing really worrisome there. It's not a scary movie or anything like this. Have you ever experienced that, right? Wanting to feel relaxed, eating food to feel relaxed, and yet not getting that result. Then if you have experienced that, it means really that there's no direct connection between food and relaxation. And the problem with that story we tell ourselves that food makes me relax is that then it's as if we're giving away our power to the food. I need food to relax. I can't relax without food, which is not true. There are plenty of times when you relax without food, without maybe anything else, right? You can do it on your own. But when we have this story in our head that food makes me relax, of course, we'll reach for more food. And of course, we won't feel truly 
relaxed if there's no food around. Quite the opposite. Maybe we'll feel stressed because we haven't got this coping mechanism around us when we need it. So what I love to do with my clients is to go through three steps. The first one is to notice. That's exactly what we've done. We've noticed that we've got a story in our head. Nothing's wrong with that. We've got plenty of stories in our head. And that's it, right? We notice that story. The second thing is that we question that story in our head. And then as a third step, we decide to maybe change the story for a story that would benefit us much more. So let's move on to step number two, questioning the story in our head. So we have this story that food makes me relax. Okay, first question you could ask yourself if you want to is, what do I find relaxing in food or in eating, right? So let's be specific. If we buy into that story that food makes me relax, let's be specific, let's be precise, let's be clear. What in particular about food makes me relax? Is it a particular type of food? Is it a particular type or way of eating? Is it a particular amount of food? Is it a particular flavor or texture? What is it in me? All right, we're going to gain awareness simply by answering that question, right? And you don't have to find the answer straight away. It can take time. You can keep that question in mind whenever you're eating, whenever you're noticing you're eating to find relaxation, right? That's the first question. What do I find relaxing in food? The second question you could ask yourself is, what does relax mean to me? When I feel relaxed, what does it look like? What do I do? What, how do I feel in my body? What is it? What am I thinking? And that could be the third question, actually. What thoughts make me relax? If it's not directly food that makes me relaxed, then what is it? And surely it's the thoughts I'm having when I'm eating food. And perhaps that could be thought that, oh, Thoughts like, this is so good, uh, it's exactly what I needed, um, I feel so much better now, right? Foo thoughts that actually help us, help us release the tension that we may have been feeling before. And so once we've seen more clearly what's going on in our brain, because we've asked questions, specific questions as to that sentence, that story that we had, we can then decide if we want to, there's no obligation there, but we can decide to move on, to move away from the belief that food makes me relax and maybe to explore different possibilities, different stories, different sentences that we could choose to think on purpose this time. The first one could be, I believe food can relax me and I'm not alone, right? It could be simply acknowledging that, yes, I have this belief, other people have that belief. Yep, maybe it's a belief that's uh, nourished by um, food, the food industry. Nothing's wrong with that. But then I've got the power to take a step back and to see this sentence for what it is. I believe food can relax me and I'm not alone, right? It's a belief, it's a common belief. Nothing's gonna wrong. A second sentence you could choose to think on purpose if you want to, could be right now, I'm choosing to relax with food, right? And it's really about owning that choice. Right now, this is my, my choice, my decision. I didn't know before that I was doing that, but now I see it and I decide that for the time being, it's okay. It's something that I want to keep on doing and now I'm conscious of it. And maybe I'm choosing to do it consciously. That's fine, nothing's gone wrong. And the third decision you could make, the third story, the third sentence you could choose to adopt if you want to, could be, I could choose to relax differently if I wanted to. Then again, we're just opening the door to other possibilities. There's no rush. We're just simply noticing that we've chosen that option. We're also noticing that there are plenty other options, right? I hope this video was helpful to you. This is my wish. This is really why I'm doing this, to help as many people I can, because I love helping people. And I also know how painful stress eating can be. First, the physical pain that we have, that we get when we overeat, but also, and maybe that's the main thing, that's the most painful thing, the mental and emotional pain that we go through when we've eaten too much. The guilt, the regret, the shame, right? I used to think I was a freak because I was doing that. Now I see that it's so much more common than we think. 
And it's still something that we don't want to do, and that's okay. There are solutions. And by the way, if you want to, you can click below this video because there are different ways you can work with me if that's something that you'd like to do. For the time being, I'm going to wish you a very beautiful rest of your day. Take care. Bye.